Alright guys, in this video I'll show you uh, the way to bring in drawing files into magnet field or magnet field layout. Both programs are essentially very similar, so the steps are almost identical on both of them. I have a demo version, so ignore this screen, but otherwise um, the first screen that typically uh, prompts you for a uh, hardware connection to your instrument is here. I don't need to connect to an instrument yet, so I'll just hit home. Uh, in the plan view, I have nothing here. Um, I am in the default job, but you can be in whatever job you prefer to be, of course, in if you have a name for a project or something. But I will leave the default job be. I will just bring in a drawing into this job. So I'll go job and I'll go into my exchange button over here. And I am now going to get the drawing file from a file into this default job. So I'll go into from file. And a drawing file is a lines file. It's a line work, essentially. So uh, if you don't do it this way, uh, the program defaults to multiple. And I'll, I'll, I can show you how that works too. But typically, when you do multiple and then you find your DWG over here in the list, uh, it'll ask you, are you bringing in points and lines and areas? Um, well, you can leave it here, but if you make that choice right here, it's not going to ask you. It'll just bring in everything as lines. But for the sake of the video, I'll make it say multiple. AutoCAD drawing DWG is correct. Next, uh, I have a DWG on my thumb drive over here. So what I'll do is I actually go into uh, my computer, and my thumb drive is plugged into uh, the USB. Uh, and it's a USB drive, so double click this. Uh, it's called DWG, and mine's called Fourth Floor Drawing. Uh, I have many of them, but this is the one that I'm using for the video. We'll hit OK. It's saying that it's bringing in 3,945 lines, 24 layers. It's bringing in all these layers. I'm not going to be editing and adjusting anything. You can start messing with this uh, at your own you know, leisure at that point. But I'm happy with this. It imports 23 layers and background elements. Close. Now if I hit home again and I go into my plan view over here, now I have something on the actual screen. And now I tell everybody, even though this is mm, typically not necessary on a DWG, but zoom in to anywhere where you have some dimensions. So let's say there's dimensions over here. So we have uh, dimensions like that right here, right? So what I'll do, and I want everybody to kind of do this just so that they have a, a good understanding that this is a scale drawing. In this uh, map view or plan view, what I do is I create points and you hit the little create point icon and I'll create the point at the end of line. And I know that the dimensions that I'm kind of looking at are above these lines and these are the actual annotations right so i'll make a point at the end of this arrow over here and i'll click somewhere here it'll create the point at the end here and then i'll do the same thing here i'll go and click somewhere here just so that i have these two points now i have these two points created uh, i'll click point number one i'll click point number two and on a tablet style data collector you just hold your finger down on one of these points and a menu will pop up i'm using a mouse so i just right click but it should be the same thing i should be able to hit the button that says calculate inverse and when i'm looking at the inverse what i'm looking for is my horizontal distance uh, one foot six inches and nine sixteenths one foot six inches nine sixteenths written in a weird way but essentially that's it so i know these two points uh, that are supposed to be at this distance are actually scaled in the drawing properly too. So I know the drawing is inserted um, correctly. I don't need these points if I don't want them. I can just highlight them, of course, and uh, again, just delete. And I can highlight this point and delete. Um, one uh, word of caution, or at least maybe maybe uh, something to take away from this video also, besides just drawing, uh, using the or inserting the drawing is, if you get lost and you select certain things that you really didn't want to select and you are having a hard time deselecting stuff, do yourself a favor, click any of these icons and then unclick, the, unclick it again. So click this and unclick and that way you're not staying in a feature uh, 
that you don't want to be uh, doing. For example, if you forget that you have this uh, icon selected, your right-click option will not come up and you will be hard-pressed to, and, and nothing's actually highlighting and it's, it's just not working. So just make sure that you don't have anything selected if you're not trying to use a feature. And if you have something selected that you didn't mean to have selected, either click it to deselect it or just click anything else twice. That's like essentially your escape over here. Um, let's do this thing uh, while we're in this screen. If uh, these are column lines over here and I need to offset my column line, uh, for example, I don't know, two feet to the north, easiest way to do this is just highlight any of these uh, sections over here and actually right click it and do, hey, I want to do uh, create an offset to this polyline. I'll offset it to two feet to the left. Now that's a problem because obviously I don't know which way is the actual left. Um, when you look very, very closely on the drawing over here, it shows you which way is left. Uh, this is really zoomed out uh, awfully close. Uh, but you see that this is the main feature that I'm looking at and it's proposing and it's very in line with the actual scale bar over here. But you can see that this is red over here rather than red over here. So I know I need it up. I'll hit create. What that creates is this line. What is this line good for? Uh, I now have a center uh, column line that I can also offset. So let's do this. Let's do uh, deselect. See, this is now selected and I don't want to have it selected. So I'll just click somewhere else. I'll column line this guy, for example, and I'll right click this and I'll say create another offset to this polyline. And I'll go this time two feet to the right over here. So hit create. Now I have these two and I know this is now an offset uh, set of polylines that are really uh, two feet from column line, whatever this one is, F4 and column line 7.7. .7. And if I need a intersection point over here, I create my intersection point and notice how this is highlighted. This is not going to work without me actually clicking this icon, but it just went away. So that's good. Now I need to do an intersection point. Intersection point doesn't actually have to be drawn to get created. But if I click that and I click that, now I have my point that's exactly two feet and two feet away from the dead center of the column line. If I obviously now need to do more points, uh, I can just either extend this line or create another offset to this line uh, to the left, uh, to the left over here, right? And we can just recreate a, like a bolt pattern or something if you want. But that's how you create these points. Now you have this point and you know it's to scale. If you need to know a little bit more about any of the points, you can always highlight them, right click them and go into information and they'll kind of give you your X, Y, Z um, information uh, for being able to at least trust uh, what the software did on top of your drawing. Um, if you need to also turn off certain layers because you have too many layers, be aware that this is a layer turn on, turn off, um, properties option on the map here and you can go ahead and kind of start disabling layers that you don't want to see i don't know i have these match lines apparently can be turned off and uh, many other layers that don't seem to have uh, entities on them or in them uh, but essentially you can go ahead and actually turn these things on and off as many times as you want just to declutter your drawing that you have over here all right, so hopefully this was a, a useful video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below.